Uh, good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary people. This is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Baseball Talk for Thursday, July 29th. I'm, I'm going to try and talk a little louder, even though I, like, I'm really... I just get a little self-conscious when I'm filming at my house. My roommates are here. You know, I don't want them to hear me and think I'm some freaking nerdy dork, even though I, I probably... I kind of really am, but... Um, <laughs> Just trying to talk louder because I'm getting some complaints about the volume. Um, so I want to give a give a shout out to my friend Andy, who I, I've spent a lot of time with. He's from Roseburg, and he came up here for FedEx school uh, for about six weeks. Wait, so we've been hanging out once or twice a week, pretty much. I guess I wouldn't say every week, but it's really cool to to connect, finally connect with a guy who I've been Facebook friends with for years. He's a really cool guy. And uh, he, he, he does apparently watch all of my videos, so that's really cool. He, he, just, he doesn't ever leave any comments or anything, but it's all good. Um, I, I don't know why YouTube doesn't allow me to see who is viewing my stuff or who my subscribers are, any of that. So it doesn't, it doesn't I'm not allowed, I don't know how, to, maybe, it, maybe I'm allowed to. I just don't know how, so I'll have to look into that, I guess. But Andy and I... Had a, we had a good time while he was here, and, um, you know, it sucks that he's leaving, but uh, I need to go down to Roseburg and see him when he has his engagement party or wedding or whatever whatever he may have. He's just going to have to give me, some, give me some heads up, you know, some advance notice to let me know that, hey, this is happening on this day at this time, so hopefully you can make it or not, you know, because Roseburg's about a three-hour drive for me currently. Um, we had, we had a lot of fun yesterday. We, uh, EJ, my friend EJ is back in town. He's, uh, we met here in Portland. We worked at the airport together and, uh, he ended up moving to Florida. He's the guy I went and visited in Florida back in January. Uh, real, real good dude, real positive guy. He's back in town for about a month too. So yesterday was a day where all three of us got to hang out <laughs> and a lot of fun. We started a storm breaker, uh, down in Mississippi. Mississippi Avenue, uh, which is a, a popular, uh, a popular street in Portland. So we did a little bar hopping. I got pretty, da pretty damn wasted. Uh, ended up, ended up. Uh, I stopped. I quit drinking for a while so I could drive home. I, I was, I got sober enough to drink, but I, and I, I came home, went to bed, was able to sleep despite the heat. Woke up a couple, a couple hours later. Um, really didn't feel good ended up puking up my dinner that i ate and uh but all things considered i feel i woke up at 4 a.m feeling great even though i slept i don't know maybe three hours and, and woke up uh, puking my dinner up just a couple hours before that but i woke up feeling normal better better than normal honestly like i, I just i have a superpower i just i don't get hangovers it's really really cool i guess i need to I, because of the, the the way this room is situated, I have to have uh, my phone back against the wall here, and I'm here. So I guess if, if I need to talk louder, I need to get closer uh, and just lean. I guess lean can contribute to the bad posture I have. But after we went to after EJ left to go to dinner with his with um, his friend, another friend, Andy and I went to <laughs> to a strip club. For a while, and uh, you know that was that's my first trip to a strip club in Portland. It was okay, you know. It's I just it's just, strip clubs have also never really been my scene because it's like it's just so. <laughs> I, I want a woman to like me for me, you know. I have to give them money to get attention, all that stuff, uh, and that's exactly what happens. So it doesn't really make me feel better as a as a person to, to get attention from strippers because I'm having to pay them for that. They're not giving it to me free. They're not giving it to me because they like me. So, um, but it was cool to have, you know, that quality time with with a male uh, friend. It's not something that, that that I've had much of in the last couple of years. Um, yeah. So thanks, thanks for that, Andy, and. Uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of do want to sell you my car for twelve hundred bucks because that's a, it's a hell of a deal. I just gotta figure out what I'm gonna do because, like, I kind of need my car 
did my job. Um, I don't know why you can't find a car down in like Roseburg or something. There gotta be better quality cars down there for the money that you're trying to buy a car for, right? You would think. Um, what else was I gonna talk about? So, uh, popcorn, movie theater popcorn. I really, I really enjoy it. It tastes so good. I love the butter. It's the best butter in the world. But I've been doing a little bit of research uh, because I've noticed, uh, this may be too much information, but I've noticed the, the movie theater popcorn, I'm pretty sure it's the po it's the popcorn or the butter. It's something <laughs> in the popcorn or the butter. And really does not agree with my stomach. So uh, even though I enjoy eating it, um, I end up regretting it not too long afterwards. And... Uh, so I, I've been trying to figure out what it is. Um, so did you know that popcorn, movie theater pop, popcorn is vegan, actually, because they use the, uh, they don't use, um, well, it's not real butter, so they don't use dairy. So it's like soybean oil or something. So it's, it's vegan, vegan butter. And then also the butter flavoring, it's not real butter. Um, so it's like a chemical. So it's butter flavored chemicals, which doesn't sound appealing, right? When you when you look into it. So I, I'm gonna guess it's that butter that is bothering me. And it really breaks my heart. I'm probably not gonna be able to continue to eat movie theater popcorn with butter. And if it doesn't have butter on it, I don't want it because popcorn without butter, uh, no, this is not good. I'm gonna pass on that. Um, so, yeah, that's like the one of my that's my favorite reason, favorite thing to get when I go to the movie theater is popcorn with butter. And then of course I like the big, the big large size soda. Uh, you get a refill on that. It's I'm a caffeine addict, which I know I definitely need to drink less soda because it's bad for me. Uh, but I just I, I just love the taste of cola. And so, it, what what these companies need to do is they need to find like water. Uh, cola flavored water. They need to start selling that, marketing that, producing that. I would buy the shit out of it. It's be a lot healthier alternative. Um, and I, I really I have no problem with water. I love my, one of my fa all time favorite drinks forever has been nice chilled like ice water. Like I, I just it's just so refreshing. I just love it. Um, but <laughs> you know, water. Um, I don't really have access that kind of water anymore because uh, my freezer out there does not produce ice and uh, it doesn't really keep water frozen um my mini fridge freezer doesn't really work so uh, i usually the best i can do is like chilled refrigerated water which is nothing wrong with that either um but yeah, cola flavored water. If if there was if there was a thing, cola flavored water, I would be all over it. I would buy stock in that. And then yesterday, not yesterday, Tuesday. Tuesday I bought this new Gatorade because it's on sale at the at the AMPM. Uh, it's Tropical Punch Gatorade. I thought it'd be okay. It's not. It sucks. Um, it's, just like every Gatorade flavor that comes out now, it sucks. I don't know why they stopped making, I know why they stopped making the good flavors. They stopped making the good flavors because of COVID, blah, blah, blah. COVID is over. Uh, <laughs> time to start producing the good stuff because I'm getting tired of walking into the store for Gatorade and not having any good selections. It's all crap. Get I want the melon. I want the melon back. That was the f most fantastic Gatorade flavor of all time. Um, I absolutely love it. And I, I can still get melon Powerade. That's just not even the same. Not even the same thing. It's it's okay. It's good. It's just not even clean. Not even close to the same flavor. The melon Gatorade is where it's at. It's perfect. Uh, I miss it so much, and I want some. I've been craving some for months now, and I can't find it anywhere. <sighs> Anyways, um, EJ and I were gonna hang out again today because the the Alberta Street Fair down on Alberta Street in Portland where Great Notion is and some other cool bars, other cool stuff. Alberta Street is really one of another one of the more hip, trendy places in Portland. Uh, I was looking forward to that street fair, but they canceled it because of the heat. Because the, the, Portland, like if it gets 
If you get too much ice and snow, everything shuts down. If it gets too hot, everything shuts down. Uh, it's, <laughs> for being a city that has so many different seasons all the time, like within the same day, within the same hour, you have so many different seasons, uh, you would think that, that the city would be able to function a little bit better with uh, changing weather. Um, but no, nah, it gets like over 100 degrees. And, you know, the city can't function if it gets a little bit of snow. Uh, God, people just leave their cars stranded on the side of the freeway. Um, airplanes can't take off. <laughs> people, jobs, businesses shut down. It's just schools shut down. It's, it's ridiculous around here. Um, but let's get to the baseball stuff. I've talked for almost 11 minutes now. Hopefully, the volume is good enough. Let's get to the hitters. The three hitters to consider adding for this weekend for uh, to get this weekend to steam and hot hitters. We got Rymel Tapia, an outfielder for the Blue Jays. He doesn't play every day right now. He was an everyday player. But he kind of lost that. Um, kind of lost that spot as the Blue Jays got more healthy. Rymel Tapia wasn't having the greatest start to the season, but um, he when he gets on, when he gets on on the field. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, he has been raking. So the Blue Jays are probably going to have to make him an everyday player again. And uh, he's definitely deserving it. Um, I, I just feel like Ryan Tapp is one of those guys who the less he plays, the better he looks. That's just, He's just been that way his whole career. Uh, but he's worth having on the days when he's in the lineup uh, in daily transaction leagues. And then Tony Kemp, second baseman outfielder for the Athletics. He's... Um, having a really good stretch of games right now. He's finally getting an opportunity to be an everyday player, and he's proven that he is um, deserving of it. He's proving that he probably should have had the opportunity earlier in his career. And then A.J. Pollock, an outfielder for the White Sox, he's throwing it back to five, six years ago when he was with the Diamondbacks, when he was one of the top 15, 20 hitters in baseball, in fantasy-wise anyways. Um, he used to be everybody's he used to be a first round pick second round pick at the top of drafts for like a good two three year stretch there in Arizona he's playing like that again uh, and he he should continue to see every day at bats while the White Sox outfielders are hurt moving on to the pitchers I've got four for you on Friday I have five for you on Saturday and one for you on Sunday so Friday um, Jose Quintana of the Pirates versus the Phillies. He could very well be traded. This could be his last start with Pittsburgh, but he is pitching really well this season. Um, he's still in the streaming tier, and uh, he's going to want to go out and showcase himself um, in front of scouts and stuff um, for teams who are looking for some pitching. Um, because Jose Quintana, it's, it's, I, I feel very, very confident, like over 90% confident he's going to be gone because he's on a very cheap contract. And uh, he's not, so he's not going to cost that much for a team to get. It's, it's going to take one or two low level uh, minor leaguers to get him. The Jeffrey Springs um, for, the, for the Rays is versus the Guardians. Jeffrey Springs has been a streaming darling for the entirety of this year. Uh, I don't think he's got over 50% ownership yet. He was creeping up there, and then he got hurt, uh, and then he's been back. His start since he's been back has not, have not been great. July has not been kind to him, uh, but I do like him. I still like him. I still think he's very talented. The Rays do a tremendous job in developing pitchers. The Guardians are a team that he should be able to have a successful day against. Madison Bumgarner, <laughs> another guy who could be on the move here in the next week. Um... I know the Braves are a tough opponent. He'll be he'll be in Atlanta, but he's coming off a 30-point start his last game. Um, he has looked like a much better pitcher, <laughs> much more like the pitcher Madison Bumgarner of old uh, instead of the pitcher that he's been for pretty much the whole time he's been in Arizona. Um, Madison Bumgarner kind of throwing it back a little bit. So maybe a team, a contending team, which I think will be better a better situation for Madison but for Mad Dumb moving forward. Uh, if he can get on to a better team, that would be better for him fantasy-wise. And then Alex Cobb of the Giants uh, against the Cubs. The Cubs are a very weak lineup, and they could get even weaker in the next couple of days because the Cubs are in cell mode. Wilson Contreras could be gone. Ian Happ could be gone. Ugh, any number of everybody else 
could be could also be gone. So a weak lineup gonna get a little weaker. Alex Cobb pitching pretty well overall this season. His ownership probably should be a little bit higher. Saturday we got Corey Kluber versus the Guardians. He's right at the 50% threshold. So I debated putting him in here, but overall I, I am gonna do it. Corey Kluber against his old team. I like that matchup. Ross Stripling, Blue Jays versus the weak Tigers. The Tigers were supposed to be a breakout team this season. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, Tigers, you know, the Tigers are going to get some pitching if they want to be competitive. Mitch Keller is having a, a really nice stretch of games. He'll be pitching for the Pirates against the Phillies. Johnny Cueto, one of the most consistent pitchers out there who are readily available. That He's been available. I don't think he's ever. His ownership's ever been over 50% this season. Uh, but he is Average wise, one of the better starters out there available, and he'll be facing the weak Oakland Athletics, who also are another team that could see a lot of changes within the next few days. And then Reed Detmers is back in the majors for the Angels against the Rangers. July has been a fantastic month for him. I, I, I still believe in Reed Detmers' talent moving forward. Uh, the Rangers are not a team that should scare anybody, especially with the way that Devers has been pitching over the last, over this entire month. He gets one more turn here in July. <sighs> Roll with him again. And then we'll reevaluate this this uh, situation with Reed Devers in August. And then Sunday, I've got one for you. Aaron Ashby of the Brewers at the Red Sox. Red Sox are in a, a huge hell of a struggle right now. And Aaron Ashby is on the, ver is kind of another one of those young Brewers pitchers who's just going to be elite. Like, it j they just... I don't, they just, something in the water there in Milwaukee. Brandon Woodruff, Colvin Burns, Freddie Peralta, now Aaron Ashby, then Josh Hader, of course, Devin Williams in the bullpen. <laughs> the Brewers are doing something <laughs> in their minor leagues uh, that they're doing something right when it comes to pitchers. Aaron Ashby coming up a nine start, a nine strikeout performance in his last start, going against a really, really bad Red Sox team right now. I'm loving that matchup on Sunday. That could put you over the top to help you win your matchup on Sunday. Or it could, uh, if you're already ahead, it could make your lead insurmountable. So, all right. I guess that wasn't that wasn't quite as long as I thought since I spent the first 11 minutes talking about, you know, myself because I'm so narcissistic. Uh, I need to get back to work. Um... I haven't worked much this week. Uh, so I need to go out and make some money tonight. Um, I did go out for about an hour and a half earlier. Not super successful, but it was, you know, it was nice and steady. I think I did, I think I did uh, three deliveries in an hour and 15 minutes or something. First one took a while because I had to go from one side of Vancouver to the other and then to Portland. Even though the stupid thing said the delivery was in Vancouver, Uber, Uber, the Uber app has been off for a while. It's been saying Vancouver a lot when it's actually been Camas or Washougal or Portland, you know. Um, and luckily I got over to Portland back right before traffic started getting back. I mean, traffic was bad southbound because the, the exits, all the exits at, in, on the 205 just make it so freaking congested all the time. Luckily I was getting off an airport way, so I had the first exit, got off, and then um, when I was coming back, luckily traffic was not uh, bad coming back yet but I have no intention of going back over there today I just I can't I'm not making any money if I'm sitting in traffic you know so I want to do uh, as quickly as quick and efficient deliveries as possible and if I have to go to Portland it's in traffic for a half hour 45 minutes <sighs> I'm not making any problem I'm not making any money there so um what else was I gonna say Oh yeah, I did have like a $36 hour on Tuesday though. I didn't work much on Tuesday, but I did go out for uh, like an hour and a half. I made 50 bucks. Uh, I made $36 in the first hour and then I made 14 in the next half hour. So it was Tuesday was a really successful night. I, should, I wish I would have went out more, but uh, I don't know what I was doing. It was, Tuesday was, I think Tuesday was a weird day. I was just kind of sleeping all day. And, I don't know. I should have went out more though. Uh, but all right, we're we're pushing 20 minutes. I think I, I think I did a 
<laughs> I think I talked enough. Peace, love, and nacho fries. Stay blessed. Namaste. And uh, good luck to you.